Today's Stillmates Warrior partner is Sheep Underwear. And we want to take the time to thank them for the offer that will be provided during this episode and for teaming up with the podcast to provide a better listening experience for you. You can find out more about Sheep Underwear at sheepunderwear.com or by visiting stillmatesawarrior.com. What's up, guys? Still Mace Warrior here. And before we get started, I want to mention that I partnered up with Sheath Underwear, and I recently posted a picture of me in underwear. I don't normally do that, but I did it just because I want to get people's attention, and I wanted you to know about the partner and about this discount that I'm about to mention right now. You can save 25% off your first order when you enter SMW Sheath on checkout. So there's a little promo code area. You add your stuff to the cart and uh you add the code all right so anyways uh let's go into this uh podcast which i'm actually really excited i was very lucky because i got to meet john odin at a kips workshop uh last month in august and he just blew me away by uh, like all his you know his teachings and stuff like that so john odin he's owner and founder of empowered strength um, he is a strong first instructor, FMS level two. He's a KIPS True Mace certificate. He's certified by KIPS and uh, he has many recent Highland Game personal accomplishments, which I'm going to let him explain to you and tell his story. Uh, I'm just going to give you a little uh, insight on that. He's a world record holder. So I'm really excited over, over this podcast. So John, let's talk <laughs> about you. Let's talk about your, uh, you know, your story. Um, in fitness, you know, where you got started, um, and then maybe go into Highland Games and how you use the mace. Sure. Yeah, that was easy, easy place to start. <laughs> start, <laughs> start. Yeah, so uh, I've been in the fitness industry since I was 20 years old, and I am 38 now. So uh, I just always knew I wanted to do I actually just kind of lacked confidence, lacked direction on where to get the information. This was, you know, before – there wasn't hardly anything on the internet. So it's like, okay, I think I want to, you know, I've always been big on education, you know, just grew up in that kind of family where you don't just, you know, I'm, I'm going to become a personal trainer and just go work in a gym. It was like, I'm going to become a personal trainer and I'm going to, you know, get my degree. I'm going to do all these credentials, just, just immerse in it too. So not to take away or say that there aren't, you know, people who do that really well without education. I you know, respect that kind of more than ever, this self-taught stuff too. Uh, but I know I, I, for me, at least I needed to go immerse in the academic side of things too. So, uh, you know, did, did that, got my degree, uh, 2002 back in those, those days. I don't have to give it all, give you all the timeline of things too, but yeah. so I was working, working at a commercial gym. Thankfully I was able to do that during my college time because there was a lot of gaps and you know, the, what, what's going on with the science and what's going on actually, you know, I could say in the trenches in the trenches affectionately to you know the work I was actually doing and, and had a few good mentors and that's what I'll probably repeat a few times over and over having good mentors realizing when you've made mistakes staying humble staying hungry all those you know you gotta gotta hustle in this in this industry so right uh was training at at the commercial gym over in um in Ellensburg Washington so I was um, in Washington State and actually ended up moving down to San Diego, took a good internship down there with, with a couple of my mentors, and it was more of a medical, kind of a hybrid medical fitness center, so I got some good exposure. They were big lifters themselves and doing some more unconventional kind of things back in those days where it was just lots of machines still, it was bodybuilding, right. and we were doing curls, we were doing <laughs> bench presses, thankfully I was training my legs and like, hey, there's got to be some other things out there for me, too, or just in general. And, you know, spent about a year down there. That was was a great experience, but I knew I was meant to be back in the Northwest. So I actually took a job with – I just couldn't couldn't put myself out there. I wasn't ready from a business commercial side to, like, I'm, I'm all in on just personal training. So I worked in the hospital setting for 13 years, actually, back in my old – hometown in the smaller hospital setting but on the fringe I was always uh, tra- you know figuring out my own training and training a few people too so it was a, a good way to do it good lead in um, that way I don't know if I needed to do it quite so long before I launched out completely on my own but uh, you know lots of employee wellness uh, cardiac rehab so I got all these other certifications and 
could do a little bit of everything and you're kind of stuck in this you know, box with, with people with a, you know, a lot more education, working closely with doctors, things, just learning how to play, you know, play as a team and work under a, a more rigid structure was really, was really good experience and stuff I use, you know, today or to take that professional level of, of coaching and, and just how we treat this industry. But of course we got to make it more fun. We have to inspire people. We have to find ways to, you know, get, get them, you know, not have this sick care system and just seeing that fall apart. I could right. go on and on again about that if people want to hear about it, but I think we don't need to cover too much of that. People know what the hospital setting or that sick care kind of mindset. So there was a lot of that. It was just, uh, you know, again, an interesting experience. And then I got to do more employee wellness, you know, bring in, um, we didn't bring in maces at that time, but we did bring in kettlebells having, I guess I can share that to you, 2004, I think was my first time. I was looking for alternatives. I started doing the Highland, the Scottish Highland Games. Right. Which are, I can give a little background. People may not know what that is. Yeah, even let's about. go into that. Because I personally did, I, I had no clue what Highland Games were until I went on your Instagram and I was checking out Tyler's <laughs> and I was like, what the heck is this? So if you can sure. explain a little bit about the Highland Games. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Tyler covered it much in his, in his podcast, did he? A little bit. A couple little tidbits, yeah. So the different, it's basically different throwing implements. You know, it's a Scottish origin and, and the modern Olympics have evolved out of those events. And then some of the events like the caber toss is a big telephone pole looking thing. This right. tree trunk that you flip over and end over end. Anybody that says they know the exact history of that, they're, they're lying to you. They're, nobody knows the exact origin. There's a lots of theories from, you know, just Scotsman being bored out in the woods to, you know, flipping it over a moat or something like that to storm the castle, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever gives us our, you know, modern, modern uh, excitement and flair out of these traditional events. But so there's two, two different stone weights, which are like the shot put it's 16 and 22 pounds usually. And they do have to actually make a, it's a rigid um, weight structure and, and, you know, rule and rules for judging and things like that. So it's, it's not just guys going out or ladies too, actually going out in the field and throwing rocks. It's, it's kind of can be simplified down into that. Uh, if you want to, if you want to call it that, but uh, there's a lot of technique. It's very, um, it can be very you know, rigid in, in the ways of like track and field and the training that goes into it. Um, but then there's two weights. So there's a 28 pound weight, which we call the lightweight. And then as a lightweight athlete, we get to throw the 42 pound weight uh, for distance or heavyweights throw the 56 pound weight. So I compete in both wow. classes kind of throughout the year. I went over to Scotland this last year, which is kind of the Mecca of our sport. And there is like, Oh, probably over a hundred competitions all summer long. So you can make, it's like a tour and we kind of have that in the U S but with Scotland, it's even more this, this big tour of events. And I got to do, um, actually just four competitions over there this, this summer as a, wow. that's kind of a, a very light heavyweight at about that, 225. That's a lot of competition. <laughs> that's so yeah, like It is by, by other sports standards, yeah. um, four competitions in two weeks and, got to do some heavy stone lifting and things like that, that I'm just kind of a wannabe strong man and in the you know back of my mind or something too. But I, I love that anything to do with lifting, lifting heavy stuff, throwing, you know, really mobility. If, if I could be inspirational, I'd rather be the health and mobility guy in, in, in the base too. just, just doing some unconventional stuff, doing things well and, you know, being professional is ultimately what I'm looking to do. But like you're joking around too with your, like you're saying, you're, you're posing in, in you know, yeah. <laughs> so sometimes I, 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 I'll do a few posts a year like that too and kind of make a joke. Just like, Hey, if you, if you know, <laughs> you, you gotta, you gotta share that a little bit too. Yeah. Especially on Instagram. It's going to get the most, right. you know, the most exposure. And then you can share all your other, you know, more, um, more meaningful stuff, more impactful stuff that you right. want to get, to get right. your, get your audience interested and then, Beat them the real, real stuff too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, just like, I mean, in my mind, you're saying you're throwing around these like fifty pound. I think you mentioned yeah. it was fifty pound. I mean, that's fucking hard to do, right? I mean, how long have you been training to do something like that? And like, what does it take oh, to man. throw weight yeah. like that in Let the me, air? I forgot the other event. I didn't cover all the other events. We didn't get that, so I'll, I'll yeah. hit those quick too. So there's two hammers. They're sixteen and twenty two pounds. 
And that is, it looks almost exactly like the, the Mace or, you know, real dense. Um, it's on PVC or it's on uh, rattan, actually. So it's a rattan handle. So it's, it's got this flexi whippy thing. And I'll get into that a little bit later, too, how I started swinging that around like a mason. It's just like, oh, this is, this is cool in, it, in itself. And it's a fun challenge. Um, and then there's, there's a weight over bar, which is what I just set the, the world record for uh, this last weekend in, um, in my old home, hometown of Kelso, Washington, there with that 42 pound weight, throwing it 19 feet. Standing, wow. so there's a standing which is is like a, kind of like a kettlebell on a handle, with a swivel to it. So it's it's definitely got a little bit of play to it. So you have to time all that stuff just right. But um, uh, I also have the spinning world world record. So there's two different. They're they're not always recognized, and over in Scotland and things like that, they just mm-hmm. have this traditional style, which is standing. Kind of looks like you're you're you know standing up with it to do a kettlebell snatch or something like that. Oh, uh, uh, okay. And, stand and deliver type of throw and that's you know a unique challenge and so is the spinning spinning is just his own style where you do a full kind of like a discus turn and throw that thing uh ideally over the bar sometimes it doesn't always go that well Um, and then there's a a sheath toss is another event that's a height event so you throw this it looks like a old-fashioned kind of medicine ball or basically a you know burlap sack with about 16 to 20 pounds in there uh, and then I mentioned the caber a little bit already. Caber is that big uh, telephone pole that you have to flip for uh, for accuracy, actually. And it has to, you know, it's heavy enough where it's very challenging to get that thing just to flip over. So people say, right. oh, how many, how many times do you turn it? You turn it once if you're lucky, <laughs> if it's a good <laughs> size caber. You're not going to flip something, you know, over 100 pounds, 18, 19, sometimes over 20 feet long. It doesn't go yeah. over more than once. And it just has to be the right balance and the right uh, run. You run with it and then you stop and you do kind of like a uh, hang snatch or something where you're just wow. that thing over your head too. It's, it's pretty comparable to the, like an Olympic lift that way too. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to post some videos of you doing stuff like that. Cause I'm sure people are like, what the hell is he talking about? I need to see this. Yeah. I think like we were talking about a little bit before the show, a little bit, the kettlebell and the, uh, the main, anybody who likes to swing objects around their body, which I, I really think is everybody, if it can be done safely and in the right, you know, environment, uh, super refreshing. We brought our gym members out to the field to do a little, um, little uh, field trip a couple weeks ago, and they were all digging it. They've been swinging maces, they swing kettlebells and barbell stuff. I was like, oh, that, I I appreciate this. This is like jumping throwing, running. It's just like, it's wired into our DNA. I think somewhere picking, picking right. something heavy off the ground. I think we're all just have that primal wiring, uh, sometimes for better or worse, but, uh, you know, again, yeah. doing that safely, doing that effectively. Um, it's pretty, pretty inspiring people. People like it. So. Yeah. I think the, the Atlas stones really catch my attention. I was at a fitness expo this last weekend and yeah. there was like a strong man, uh, vendor there and they had like the different uh stones set up from like the smallest to like the biggest one ever and i'm just like it always catches my attention but i'm like i'm not gonna try it there is no fucking way i'm gonna be able to pick (laughs) something up like that i'm i'm not there yet yeah yeah (laughs) there's always there's there's time that's something you keep getting stronger i know you're you're quite a bit younger than me too but yeah kind of old man strength and into my you know later 30s and especially in that kind of stuff and even certain skill areas, you can, you can keep progressing as long as you keep your body healthy for a long, long time. And those, those stones, right. I'd say starting with sandbags. We- I'm losing you a little bit there. Uh, we're good. I got you. Lost you for a second. There we go. Um, starting with sandbags. Yeah. So sandbags, uh, and heavy medicine balls, we had you know, 50, 70 pound medicine balls. And we're like all, you know, all the ladies and, and guys too were picking those up and able to, you know, bring them up to their chest and shoulder or walk with them like, oh, we need heavier bags now too. So we got 100, 150 and 200. Some of our ladies can at least pick up the 150 um, and some of the guys. And of course, you know, when you see that it's a little... It, sort of intimidating but it's just like once they see that that's the only implant that's over there in the corner there's the lightest one they'll want to it's kind of our a little trick with kettlebells too when we have really heavy kettlebells you know 
in the gym. It's, uh, you know, a little less intimidating where you can kind of, uh, tactfully trick them into in, in the best possible way, you know, yeah. sometimes lifting a little bit heavier when they're, when they're ready and able to, to hit those, um, you know, next level kind of things too. So pretty much yeah. all the ladies can, can lift that hundred and carry it or do something with it too. Now, is there a lot of ladies in the Highland games? There are quite a few ladies now, nowadays. It was very rare and over in Scotland and the traditional side, it was not allowed oh, wow. uh, back in, back in the days. But yeah, now there's a lot of classes. Um, and you get some traditional people that, that don't really like that as much, but overall it's really well accepted. It's kind of in Scotland, it's all, you know, best man win. Here's your prize money. See you later, whatever. Um, right. There's a little less of that celebration in the U.S., just like other things. Uh, it's almost like a participation trophy. Everybody gets a medal. Yeah, yeah. It's maybe gone a little too far that way, but um, I, I support overall just get people out there on the field and uh, you know enjoying the games, being a, a place for people to get information. You can find my information pretty easily out there with my YouTube and clinics and things like that. So I just right. like to I like to be a teacher is what I say above all else with. Highland Games with Mace with anything I I do I want to teach people and and do it well or or pretty much not do it I'm not gonna put something out there that I don't fully you know believe in and, and know that it's it's good quality stuff so I'm just <laughs> right right no yeah you got to believe in what you're doing so for someone who wants to like maybe learn more about Highland Games I mean I'm wondering too where would we go <laughs> yeah. to like learn about this obviously your Instagram but like sure like a you know like competition going on where do you find out about that stuff Oh yeah, there's uh, several. Well, there's it's kind of diversified for better or worse. There isn't a lot of good centralized information besides it's called Nazga Web N A S G A Web dot com. Okay. So that has like it's actually a database for the scores, things like that. Not that people need to know that to start. Uh, there's a couple other websites I can't think of off the top of my head. Um, I could give you that for like the show notes and stuff after, right. after there's a couple okay. Facebook groups uh, just you know contact me I don't mind you know at least uh, helping people in their area get connected because you really need to get a hold of somebody in your area or find out the you know the local games if they have usually it's best to register ahead of time but a lot of them will take like a walk-on type of situation and have a novice class it's a lot more approachable you know people think for other sports uh, you know they'll spend months preparing things like that which i still would optimally recommend but if it not if it means getting on the field and it's like sort of a spur of the moment thing if they're swinging maces doing kettlebell work they'll do okay with with having games if they're just out of shape and not doing anything and then they walk on that field could be the worst decision right. of your life it's, <laughs> it's nasty injuries so i i yeah. you know i'm talking out of both sides of my mouth a little bit too i just yeah. love seeing people being active and being out there i'm also you know one of the more serious competitive guys and i I'm not one to just, oh, you know, I'm going to spend my whole day just, put, tuck, you know, tucking you under my wing and, and showing you all these things on the field while I'm competing. That's not what you're going to you know, right. experience either. But coming to, I, I run uh, at least a handful of clinics. I like to go teach clinics out in different areas. I have a, I had a three-day immersion camp this last year, which was really fun, back in April well, here in Bend, Oregon. So it was really uh, just a great experience to have. Um, 12 guys come out. I'd love to see some ladies this coming year too. Um, we'll probably do it again this year, but I have a lot of, a lot of content, a lot of free stuff out there on my YouTube. You can find just off on my website. There's some other you know, great resources and books out there nowadays. Finally, you can just Google Highland games and you'll come up with some good, good stuff too. There's, there's finally some good, <clears throat> good resources. There's uh, several videos and things like that. I've done a webinar series on all the events. So it's a little more advanced. You'd, you'd have, have some, um, a little bit of background and finding a coach, finding a group that trains in your area kind of thing. But yeah, I've, I've done a whole series. It's about seven and a half hours of, of content that goes into all the events and the breakdown and showing some, some videos and, you know, now with technology, it's much easier to right. video, video yourself and, and, you know, at least learn the ropes, um, right. safely having some strategic work or again, it could just be someone who's out, you know, doing, doing their mace work, doing their uh, kettlebell work or just, you know, Hey, I'm an Olympic lifter and I want to go out and kind of uh, prove myself on the battlefield or go, go do something different. It can, it can fit that too. It's not, 
it's, it's fairly approachable from an athletic standpoint and just from, you know, the people and stuff too. So it's not, it's not bad. <laughs> right on. So what, what, what do you think? Like, do you think the Mace is really bringing the Highlands game to the forefront? And how does the Mace kind of work with that? Because I know you use it a lot for your trading, right? Yeah, that's, that's kind of a million, million dollar question. And I, I'm still uh, honing that in, I could say, too, just humbly. Uh, in some ways, it has not carried over. You would think it would carry over to the Scottish Hammer directly. It's just you know, the same kind of de- you know, device with, with leverage and, and the weights on the end, just like a, just like a mace, too. Um, but it's, it's, it's different enough. It definitely helps put things together. I love especially the heavy, heavy mace type of stuff or just the rhythm and doing things like walking, like lateral walking or forward walks or turns with the mace, things like that are just something I've kind of played around with more recently. And, you know, if nothing else, it's always part of my warmups and, uh, you know, just that rhythm component of it, moving that weight and that, you know, rotational patterns around that body is really nice. Um, but it's, it's the Scottish hammer specifically is, is its own thing. Although people are definitely lacking, you know, that body awareness and things. So I probably speaking coming at it from someone who's, who's throwing Scottish hammer for thousands and thousands of reps before I ever even touched a mace. I don't think I touched a mace until probably 2012, like a lot, maybe 2013, like, like a lot of people too. I started, you know, playing around with, with steel mace and, you know, having a 10 pound mace, getting, getting a 10 pound mace from a friend and really working that thing. And, um, really getting, you know, getting some reps under my belt and searching high and low for information out there, just like, you know, the team of Highland games or anything else I've done too. I want to really find the best coaches or find what's out there before I go and teach it or, uh, you know, try to put out a video or anything like that too. It's definitely been, been something I've pursued for a long time. So. Yeah. And you have some great videos on, on Mace training. I don't know if you want to get into that, like for total beginners, like sure. what type of I'll tips do. can you give them? Cause I, I mean, mm-hmm. I recommend learning from this guy when I was at the <laughs> workshop with you, I can actually just on another note, I can actually tell that you have a clinical background just cause mm-hmm. like when I was talking to you, you like, you knew exactly what was going on and it's probably the <laughs> FMS too. And I was like, Dang, yeah, yeah. I need to work with this guy. So let's like maybe go into like, any type of tips for beginners and like safety tips? Yeah. Too? Yeah. That was great to be able to work with you and kind of dig into some of the shoulder mechanics. And I'm, I'm happy to get, get as technical as you'd like. And of course we want to keep this, keep this fun and, and uh, approachable with some takeaways of course. But yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, starting out, uh, we talk about like shoulder range of motion. Does somebody have that overhead range just actively on their own? And of course, you know, pain free too they have that pain free. Otherwise, you know, they just have no business <laughs> swinging a mace. There's so many uh, other ways to work into that, you know, like from kettlebell halos and different, uh, just other, other, just get your mobility back overhead. There's a, you know, a lot of ways we can do that too. Just get that corrected. You know, I have to add the disclaimer, go see it, go see a professional if you're having pain, right? Or at least a physical therapist, chiropractor, orthopedic physician, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, they're great for, for what they do. Right. Uh, although as soon as, as soon as that can be done, you know, you have that active range of motion pain free, then we can start, you know, layering, doing overhead movements, doing something like a you know, kettlebell arm bar, uh, Turkish getups would be awesome. Like prerequisite precursors to the mace. Um, as much as I want people to have a mace in their hands right away. It's just like, yeah, if we, sometimes if we wait a couple days or a couple weeks, uh, it's a lot more of a, you know, of just a safe lead in of a healthy lead in uh, to not just jump right into it that way. And just, you know, as much as anybody, I'm sure too, we're so stuck yeah. in this board and down position mm-hmm. and typing and sitting. We're just disconnected from our body. Say somebody walks in there, you know, 45 years old, 55, whatever, 35, it could be any of that. Um, I see kids that just have whole posture. It's just been crazy in the last 10 years with technology. I could probably do a whole podcast just on that. So I won't go yeah. too far in that uh, direction, but for another podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, back to the more the mace, um, specifics too, to work, work into that. I like to have generally people work again, like I talked about kettlebell halos 
before they go to more dynamic movements. Indian clubs are almost always like a required prerequisites in our classes. And if I'm being really pure to that too, instead of, you know, day one, uh, just swinging a mace. There's, there's some exceptions to that too, but, but generally I want to see all those things come together or a, you know, Scottish Highland games athlete that works with me. Yeah. We can probably swing a mace on, on day one. No, you know, no problem. They'll pick right. it up pretty. But again, the average, you know, 45 year old with some, some mileage and poor body awareness, poor core mechanics, you know, they're not able to stabilize and set their, their ribs on the pelvis, just those kind of things. That's where the Turkish get up the progressions, being able to do a kettlebell halo, um, kneeling positions. I don't know if anybody's really covered a lot with different kneeling positions. I know uh, Ian, Ian Vaughn does some great stuff. I really like Ian's right. mindset. And, you know, of course, he's another strong first guy, too. And, yeah. uh, you know, I like, I like the vibe that he has and things like that. And we've, we've connected on a few different levels. So we're, um, we're really, you know, in the same lane with, with our thoughts on the, on the tools um, and how we use them. So, again, in the yeah. Indian clubs, <clears throat> possibly working in with some of the heavy, heavy steel club kind of stuff, um, and then working into the mace. And that could be in the same day. You know, somebody starts – a plus B plus C and bam, they're ready to do the mace. But you know, many times I will hold them back a little bit, not because I want to be, you know, too, too rigid with that, but it's just a, it's a smart progression. You know, why rush our, our right. members are coming in. They know how I operate and what I, you know, expectations coming in that we're looking at at least three months down the road to a year. And that's kind of bold for some trainers to, to take that on some coaches and gyms right. to say, we're not here to just fix you today. Um, although there are people now that, that will uh, come and train, they just want to train the mace or that's a big part of their training. So it's cool to see right. interest there. I don't care to a point of what, you know, what tool, or what, what brings them into the gym too. We, we got all this cool stuff and, you know, yeah. after the better health and, and wellness, you know, components of overall life. So that's always just fun to share, share that, yeah. share that journey and, and, uh, you know, give them, give them that depth of everything and, um, Definitely the mace is something I'd like to see everybody swing um, right. within a few weeks of, of training, but working into those progressions and, you know, then putting a mace in their hand I can get into some of the spe specifics of where we start and end with the mace too. But there, I've just, just started kind of tapping into that and I'm going to do some more um, blogs and things like that with progressions, that clinical mindset and, and pieces of how does this fit from, you know, a tool that's just, potentially like high end rehab or something um, like, you know, Kabuki strength was doing with the shoulder rock um, right. five, six years ago. of uh, just like, Hey, use this as a warm up or use this between your sets or something like that. And it's like, okay, this makes sense. And, and Chris Duff, has got a lot of good, good information, good people around him too. So I, I like, you know, that was, that was one of the resources and areas that I, that I liked. Um, but then it's like, Oh, they, what about swinging this heavier or loading, you know, loading the shoulder rock up? I, I had that thing loaded with up to like 50 pounds before wow. I was like, no, I need to get a better, better steel mace here or get a hold of, um, you know, a true Gata and swinging some of the heavier, <clears throat> heavier is that way. If I wanted to, I had to push that. I decided, Hey, I'm going to run this kind of controlled experiment on myself. How heavy can I swing for how many reps? At what point do my elbows and my, you know, shoulders and neck start talking to me. And thankfully I've come out, <laughs> come out of that yeah. pretty well. I think there's a couple old videos of me of swinging that, uh, with, with like two 25 pound plates on there. Wow. Um, trying to swing that thing. And it, it ended okay. I've, I've never, you know, I can say that none of my clients have, have had that either. We've, I've never had a direct injury from the mace uh, you know you, you'll clip your leg every so often and I'm sure you hear that too like aren't you gonna hit yourself in the leg yeah if you keep yeah. thinking like that if you're, if right. you're like, you pick up too heavy of mace it's you know anything's possible you got yeah that thing but it's amazing how many reps i've done and just using all different you know configurations i think i've tried the whole spectrum you know maybe as much as anybody else too with with uh different rep ranges and and types of maces and gatas. I think I have like 20 of them now, or if you include all my Scottish hammers, I've got over 20. <laughs> so that's a pretty good I, start. I think, I think that's what happens when, when you get into the mace world, you just start fucking collecting and yeah. collecting. Like if I move, like you could say right here, um, yeah. there, I got yeah. maces over here. Dude, you just start yeah. collecting. It's a normal thing. Yeah, man. Did you Beware. get a few more since, since I last saw you? 
I think so. I got my 15 pound yeah. club. I don't know if I had that. Oh, one yeah. Yet. We talked about that a little bit too. Yeah. 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 Nice. yeah. So, I mean, you just, you start collecting. It's a, <laughs> it's like a thing that happens. Just listeners, if you're going to get into mace, that might happen to you. Oh yeah. I think I, again, I, I think I started with my Scottish hammer swinging that around and I still like to swing it cause it's, it's very whippy and challenging. You get a, a different kind of feedback that way too. But I was just looking around for anything like, Oh, do I need to get a mace? Can I swing this, you know, baseball bat or whatever? Of course you try or like, you know, it's just, it's not the same or yeah. the way to one of my friends the other day with looking for, um, I really like the adjustable addex mace too. I was, I was skeptical right. about that at first. I, I have a few addex clubs and maces in my facility and, and one, at home that I can always adjust to. So I have no excuses for different weight adjustments, but uh, you know, looking at all those, all those configurations and just playing around build. I made my own mace. I don't know if you've seen that one that I, is it the I one with there. the, it looks like it's like a PV. I saw you with, like swinging one with like a PVC, like PVC pipe looking. And when you would swing yeah. that thing, it was like, <laughs> fluidly moving with you. And I'm like, Oh hell no. I can only imagine what that feels like. Yeah, that's that's probably the Scottish hammer. If it was actually like a PVC, like a gray, uh, that electrical mm -hmm. conduit, conduit. So that's, yeah. that's the, I call that one it, tripped me out. Yeah, I call it the Scottish mace, um, and that's become kind of a more or less a novelty. I'll I'll bring my you know the hammer will be out there at the field. Sometimes I'll bring an extra mace too and do that as part of my warm up. I call it my primer stuff, but it's mm -hmm. it's fun to just play around with. If you can single arm, you know the twenty two pound on this whippy handles very hard to just hold you know in that set rack position in front with the 360 so be able to do that and do that one arm that's a, a pretty cool skill in itself and all that reactive kind of shoulder stability and, and that's a cool you know potential at least rehab tool or injury prevention tool right. uh, but the, the one i made is a, a scottish hammer the ball of the hammer is 22 pounds and then i think it's five or six pounds at least for the the pipe that it's on and it's 60 inch pipe. So I wanted to, you know, talking to, you know, guys like Rick Brown, uh, Travis Janaway, you know, back a couple years ago, like, what, what do you guys think about it? Is this just stupid to even try this on this <laughs> handle? And they're like, no, get, it's, reasonable. it's a leverage tool. We want to build that torque through this, you know, this implement that way too. So it's, it's 60 inches. So it almost hits the ground. Wow. And I really get a nice stretch behind my neck. It almost hits the ground for me. And that was a little sketchy. That could that could come into my leg if I wasn't really careful or to balance it. You know, it it is very very challenging to have that five whatever that is five feet away from from my body. Um, That's crazy. It's, it's its own thing. Yeah, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's not my primary primary tool of the trade, but I I like it for what it you know what it is and just talking to more people right. and some different varieties, much as just you know, start with an awesome steel mace or start and end with a steel mace workhorse that you can just take anywhere. You don't have to worry about it getting dinged up. It's just your, like I seeing your, your mace in person, like that, that's got some mileage on it. That's got right. some, some heart and soul of, of what you're doing too. So I love, I love yeah. that too. Um, starting there is just so approachable and cheap. Uh, but then again, some of those other things, or I don't know where you, where you're at with that too, with, with an authentic Gata, uh, things like that are just, yeah, uh, I, you know, I didn't, I wasn't really big on trying different maces until I met Rick Brown and he was like, <laughs> you, you try every mace on the market. Yeah. You know, they're all going to yeah. feel different. They're all going to train you differently. And, yeah. uh, this past month when I went to, uh, his little workshop, his one-on-one, -on -one, he oh, actually yeah. had me try a lot of his maces and one of them. Being, uh, yeah. Yep. I think the evil monkey one, the one that's filled with water. And yep. I keep telling uh, everyone, it just feels like you're holding the ocean above <laughs> you dude like i there was no way i could swing that thing it was so different i'm like wow oh, i really yeah. gotta get one of these because it's 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 a different experience you know yeah. every mace i get it yeah i've i've had the pleasure of, of using um some evil monkey and the um oh i can't remember the other the other brand out there too it'll come to me um with some of the you know customized uh, adjustable maces and fillable ones too um, yeah, yeah. awesome stuff right so um just off the back where can people find you i mean i know you mentioned youtube do you want to give them like your your sure. link and stuff like that yeah my instagram um my, my business page is under empowered strength okay and so my, 
Yeah, Odin Throwing is my uh, Instagram um, account. And then you know, Facebook, too, we, we have quite a bit on, on social media. Uh, I'm definitely looking to add more, doing more um, clinics and courses and just a lot of we've, we've built up from, from doing things locally. Or, again, I wanted to learn and bring in, I still want to bring in, uh, you know, some of the, the top MACE um, enthusiasts in that, too. I always love to collaborate with different people, um, you know, and just, just be out there sharing, sharing the journey with, with people and in my, in my kind of strong first world um, and clinical world that can kind of resonate with just different, different populations than somebody doing, you know, just a pure mace flow and some of the on it stuff, which is, you know, it's own, it's own thing too. And I can appreciate you know, just right. getting people moving, loading their bodies in different ways with, you know, within reason at the right, you know, right exercise, right person, right time. Right. That's what I'm all, I'm all for within reason. And do you flow at all? I do a little bit. I'm not much of a bit. I'm not a true flow. You're not going to, I actually would rather my, my preferred tool for some of the flow is just my body weight. I'll do basically body weight, primal movement flows. Right. Uh, and Indian, I like the Indian clubs a lot. A li I like a lighter implement in my hand with the mace and, and, you know, doing some things where you're holding the ball of the mace and things. It's like, it's a, it's a leverage tool. When you're not using it as a leverage tool. It looks cool. But for me, it just doesn't, it just doesn't resonate that way. So right. you know, I get it. I love watching that stuff. It, it, to me, it becomes so dance oriented or so right. it gets meant to be swung that way or, you know, like a kettlebell too. It's like you take that thing too far, or dumbbell, whatever, barbell, you know, are you going to swing around a barbell like that? Yeah, I hope yeah. it doesn't come to that. You know, you're not going to load that with 300 pounds and start swinging around. So at some point it becomes like too far on one end of the spectrum, too far on the other. But yeah, I can I can do all the the basic flows like some of the the Genesis flow stuff and right. um, that's a little more on my lens and I'm kind of playing around with some different hybrids of different patterns but I tend to kind of like to stay and that's that's my kettlebell world from that hard style strong first it's it's a pretty pretty rigid style right. uh, like pounds as, as it's supposed to be but we we have six main exercises in our kettlebell lens and I can get more into that and and give people at least what direction that I'm going to with the maces. It's much more to own those traditional pieces and have those progressions, get their body really acclimated and strong and solid. And then, you know, go do whatever you want after that. But most people need at least a couple months, I think, before they're really, I hate to burst anybody's bubble or sound like the, you know, the elitist or something. It's like, here, it's your body. Go do whatever you want with it. But um, right. I can speak to that from, a, you know, learning by mistakes or seeing other, other people get, you know, not necessarily injured with the mace. I, I, don't, I haven't heard of, thankfully, too many injuries you know outside of my gym even too um, but I think they get really complicated their body mechanics aren't great before they start to want to do these really advanced flows it's like all this loaded movement training stuff can be great but right. hey can you again go back to like let's can you lift your arm overhead pain for it you know where your arm is in space you know right you know, you do a good Turkish you know go back to the Turkish get up can you you have a good squat can you you know, press a weight over your head. Can you do, like we'll do the bottoms up type of movements. Do you have mobility, stability, and some base level of, we call it just kind of that movement competence, movement IQ, you know, before doing that. Again, that could be the first day. You know, I'd be happy to show the right person, you know, some of the elements of flow on the first day or other, other coaches and things like that. that right. That's a different, different lens, but that's not 98% of the populations out there. So just right. keep it within, and it is a very FMS like clinical mindset that way too. But I try to disguise it. You know, this is a little bit more of a straight shot of like what we're doing. I try to, you know, gently energize people and, and give them, you know, put the carrot out there a little bit too and energize them to do, you know, do more and enjoy it. It doesn't have to be, uh, you're stuck here. You're, you can only, you right. know, eat at, eat at that table. You can't go over to that table. It's like, right. well, we do have a way of doing that. Again, that strong first kind of lens really has has helped me to hone and own the kettlebell on just basic movements and then applying that into the mace or other, you know, all the other tools that I use and, and all that. All those all those resources and people much wiser and smarter than me um, staying authentic to those those pieces too. But anyway. Right, right. So no, yeah, on. and, I, and I, I like your mindset. I like your mindset on that because I, I always have that question with a couple of other 
uh, coaches I had on the podcast. I'm like, do you recommend people go straight into the swing? So I like that you're mentioning, you know, your FMS and your strong first stuff. Um, I think it is important, right? Like we have to have body awareness. I mean, yeah. you can't just put someone with a mace who's never used it before and expect them to swing, right? I mean, it's common. Sense. Yeah, I can at least like ethically, but as a, you know, I just can't do it. it. Just there's a point, just like the Highland Games or anything else we use too. I'm not going to have somebody doing, you know, like plyo push-ups off of a box or something either. Just to use not not go back and pick on the mace or kettlebells either, but it could be your own body weight. You can just mess yourself up badly. Like, oh, we're going to learn single arm push-ups today. Let's, let's go ahead and do this. Oh, can right. you do a push-up off of your knees? Um, no. Well, okay. And, the, you know, straight off the FMS, one of the tests is, is a, is a mod- like a push-up trunk stability test. If they have poor core, and I hate to even use the word core because that, you know, that term's kind of so washed out. But if they don't have that body awareness in their, in their trunk and through the whole linkage, you know, you can just see that, that, uh, we call it reflexive strength underneath the uh, original strength lens that I also follow. That's just a more organic kind of flow and style is great stuff that they put out that just keeps it simple and gets our original strength, our, our foundation of how we moved and played from a you know primal level um, developmental sequence kind of stuff as, as babies to repattern some back, some crawling, some different rocking patterns doing, wow. um, doing more clinical type of corrective exercise as much as I don't even use that term with people too. It's, it's yeah. more, everybody has, you know, we call it our, bl- our body blueprint and we have a real extensive um, kind of <clears throat> orientation process in our facility too. And just, just when I coach uh, people too, we, we really want them to just to ha- have a great experience, you know, the long-term uh, game, long-term plan. Uh, but that can be fun too, to make it as fun as possible, get them doing as much safe loading where they're feeling energized and getting, you know, getting what they want at our, our athleticism as much as that's kind of a, a watered down maybe term too. getting, getting them feel, you know, like our gym name is empowered, empowered strength. Um, so empowering people through your strength training, having these strength standards that we want everybody to achieve where that empowered level of their fitness is. And then we have, the, we have our game changer level or you know, more of that elite standard for somebody who's after performance benefits. We want everybody to nail all these, um, these basic um, standards first uh, before they go on and do things really event. So there's elements of skill, body weight, there's barbell movements, and there's kettlebell. So I think we've uh, you know, found a good, good groove with that too. So we have you know, our max, max deadlifts. Uh, we have our kettlebell swings or snatches. We have crawling as one of our tests. Cool. Uh, we have a, a poll. I'm happy to share that with people too. But um, it's just a just a nice mix of different movement patterns that uh, you know challenge people, and we find that they get really good results. Um, in you know body body image wise, they get that athletic piece where they feel good. You know, we have a real active community out in in Bend, Oregon here, and uh, you know they're just feeling well put together and safe and solid with uh, you know everyday life kind of stuff too. They're less less injured. They're not going to the gym. They're not coming to train with us and getting broken down. They're getting restored. Like that's a, wow. a mindset wow. shift. And thankfully our industry is figuring that kind of stuff out too. And the, the quality of coaching and uh, you know level of, of standards and things like that. So it's, it's I can only imagine how awesome your gym is. I, I wish I could like move your gym <laughs> yeah. over here close to me. Cause like, <laughs> I, I'm telling you, like when I, when I met up with you at the KIPS, you know, and we yeah. did that little freaking session with you you're like yeah. breathe breathe into your belly and i'm like i am breathing <laughs> i'm like yeah that's I'm awesome for improvement i swear yeah like, this whole time like i'd be fine yeah yeah, yeah there's I'm so much i mean with you do just a whole podcast on on breath work and i i am not a true expert in in the breath work area but that's you know again part of our hard style kettlebell system and just just authentically how we're meant to breathe that bio, we talk about that with the mace to the biomechanics of breathing while we're swinging the mace too. Are we, you know, of course we can, we can say it's probably not good to hold our breath the whole time. It's probably not good to just, just be doing, you know, natural breathing. So to get people at least understanding the value and then seeing some of that benefit of, of matching their breathing with, with the you know, timing of the swing and using a little bit more of that hard style breath um, in some cases too, that really just charges the system up that way. And, you know, definitely, 
through that lens of the kettlebell again too is is just been a good way to look at how people move and have some standards on on movement and safety and and all those other parameters too. Awesome. Now for people who are listening and obviously they can't get to your gym, like all this shit is awesome. What you're, <laughs> like the stuff you're talking about, right? Yeah. Like yep. where can they get resources? Like where do we go to, to get all this like knowledge? Right. There, there are not, a, yeah, there's not a ton, a ton of inf- information and that's especially last year. Um, you know, and working with Tyler and, and Kips and that too, just talking about where, where, what's that next level, just starting organically from that. And, and uh, more recently talking with, um, with Ian Vaughn and I can definitely recommend his got a swing. If you've seen that uh, ebook that he has out now uh, too, um, yeah, yeah. just had a lot of influence from, from Rick Brown and more the traditional side of things. Um, actually Don with Adex, Don, uh, Jer Fardano, I think that's how you say his last yeah, name. Yeah. Uh, he spent some time with me over video. I've never met him in person, but just video coaching uh, that way. So I'm I'm happy to share. Not to not to sound like a name dropper, but I really like to get you know get people exposed, uh, you know, you know t- and humbly say these are people that I learned from too. Right. Uh, Travis Janaway has been really. In fact, he's got uh, you know they all have websites out there too. I don't know their websites offhand. Um, I'll add them to the blog. I'll I'll go ahead and research it. And- <clears throat> For the traditional Gata, uh, like William uh, Calvani, Calvani uh, yeah. has some great products out there. He doesn't do as much, I think, with the coaching side of things, but has just a great, uh, my my actual Gata on the bamboo shaft and just the whole process that he goes through is just really inspiring uh, to have an authentic you know, Gata to train with. Right. Now, of course, I want another, another one or two, so I'll be, be hitting him up pretty soon. Um, I was actually supposed uh, Indian clubs as a, as a precursor too. I did a lot with Indian clubs. Um, Ed Thomas is an old school resource for the Indian clubs. He's basically my kind of my mentor's mentor's mentor. He's like the master Yoda wow. of, of movement and physical culture. So he is a little harder to find. He has some content out there under, I think it's VM Militaris is his site. So that's anybody who knows him. Um, you know, you kind of know he's, I went to one of his courses in Portland. It was on, on Indian clubs about a year ago now too. So he's got some great, great stuff. Um, yeah, there's just, there's still a need and that just spurs me to want to do more of my, or just, you know, authentically myself through that kind of power, uh, using some heavier maces, going into more of the traditional, uh, 10 to two stuff doing, I'm going to get into the vintage strength games. If, if that's, um, you know, something that's going to keep going on too, I definitely want to go to the uh, vintage strength games here next mm-hmm. year and I should compete in the mace on the more traditional style. That's cool. Um, Kel, uh, Kelly man zones doing some great stuff. I've connected with oh, Kelly right. here recently. She, if you haven't had her on the podcast, um, totally oh, I good. have, I had her have you? Okay. three or four podcasts before. Oh man, I missed yeah. it. I've been going back through your podcast. I I didn't realize she was on. Awesome. Yeah, I had her. I had to have her on the podcast. She's awesome. Yeah, she's yeah her her personality and passion for the Mace is just I think uh, freaking another ridiculous. Level. Almost man. like yeah. I'm like I'm not I'm not alone. <laughs> has 19 Maces and talk to Mace, you know, at least in some conversation every day, and try to you know inspire and share that that journey too. So. I'd love to see like you come out with resources like Ian, you know, he has some exactly. ebooks out yeah, and stuff like that. Yep. So hopefully we get to see you come out with some stuff. Maybe right. Kelly, I, I think Kelly's doing webinars so far, but I'd exactly. love to see some rating material, you know, I'm real big. Yeah, on- yeah. I admittedly, I'm not a, um, a great writer or writing is not my passion, but man, I'd love, I, I, I love to teach and I know I can, you know, help more people or just, be part of the uh, of the team, something that that's doing more more good stuff out there. So um, it's coming, and it's going to be yeah. at least more more blog topics for now. Putting together some resources, uh, at least some some webinar stuff. Uh, more yeah, videos. I mean your your videos are great. Your videos, <coughs> thank are great. you. I mean, just, just that's getting started your platform, with, right? Just through YouTube, and I'd love to hear what people want. It's it's always nice. I, I'd be happy to do even like a weekly Q and A type of thing, getting on, you know doing your podcast. I think it's awesome. And, and uh, getting on your website, I need to send you my info to, to just yeah. be a contact, be a resources up, be a resource out there. But 
Um, even when you search for Mace, it's still not really well. There's not a lot of clean information. I think mine will come up in, in some of the YouTube, you know, top 10, top 20, which is cool to see that out there. Ian's stuff is out there. Right. Um, and his is probably the, the best and not probably it, it's, it's the best and the depth he's going into the breakdowns. Of course I'm, I'm whatever you want to say biased through that lens or we're yeah. more of the traditional guy. But he, but. He's been around for a long time. He has. He's been, I think when I picked up the Mace two years ago, he was around. Mm -hmm. it's, it's crazy. So, I mean, if yep. your videos are reaching top 10, that's, that's good news. Cause I mean, I know you just got into it, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we do have a huge library. If people want to see any of the other stuff or, or Highland games too, there's, uh, 200 some videos. So we do wow. we have over the last few years, but I've just been, again, making sure anything I put out is really something I've put through the, you know, my own filter and had, you know, many people, um, using these, these, um, cues and these progressions that way, you know, running it by my, maybe to a fault. Sometimes I'm a little, little slow to, to put it out there. But again, anything I do has been, been through the ringer a little bit first. And then, then I'm always like, Hey, what do you, you know, I'll, I'll ask Kelly, I'll ask, you know, like, what do you think of this? You know, I, that's why I want to work together with them too. It's like yeah. you know, iron sharpens iron, that kind of mentality too. I, I don't want to just be out of my mad scientist lane doing my thing. I like to work as a team and, you know, be, be creative, be authentic. You know, I know my, anything I put out, is not going to be totally off in, in left field and, you know, inspire, share with some of that fun side of things. So I do have that. I, I can have a little more intense, a little more rigid kind of mindset and, and uh, personality, but, you know, know that we all can have our, have our place in that, in that world too. Yeah. So, yeah. No, and your shit's awesome. So do you have any like <laughs> upcoming workshops or clinics like that you want yeah, to do? Yep. Right now, uh, October 6th, it's a smaller one. And I think it's all basically sold out. They just wanted to have a, have a private, uh, thing in, wow. in Medford, Oregon, um, with my friend, Peter Wolf, uh, we're going to do, do a mace workshop. He's really good and doing a lot with the Indian club. So he's got some experience. People have gone through those pieces and gone through the FMS stuff. So it's like, bam, we can just jump into it and right. start swinging maces basically and, and do things safely and effectively and, and, uh, take that next level. And, and we'll get into a little bit, a little bit of the flow side of things, but, um, a lot of it's just going to be, Hey, can you own all these essentials? Can you, can you pick this thing up correctly? Do you have good mechanics on how you pick it up? I mean, it's so easy to just ooh, bring the mace up and you're just, you're going for it. You're starting right. to do swings like, Oh, there's so many pieces, so many layers that are going to help you. You're going to swing, you know, heavier, longer, safer, all that, you know, um, 20 years from now, 50 years from now, if you right. used to, I'm sure I'll have a mace in my hand you know, the, the rest of my life, basically, just like my, my kettlebell and some of my, you know, I'll have my body weight with me the yeah. whole time for sure. So oh, yeah. all those, all those simple tools, uh, it's, it's made the list of my, you know, top, you know, top 10 things, at least that I would have, and if not higher, probably would have, you know, my own body weight kettlebell and a mace would go a hell of a long way too for, for people that are listening to just purchasing right. one or two kettlebells, a mace just fills in some other pieces of that puzzle. And, um, Again, just the authenticity of that implement moving around your body and being able to do squats with it and in other kind of static positions and uh, starting to get it get it moving on some different planes like the grave diggers and some right. you know variety of, of stuff that uh, you know Rick has really brought up and, and Don more so too. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just remember it's not about training fucking hard. It's safety too, <laughs> right? Because we want to last. So, like, <laughs> I want to swing till, like, I'm fucking 80. So, I got to listen to you, Kelly. I uh, love it. And yeah, I, I love Coach RT3 as well. I got to do a little yeah. Coach RT3. Okay, uh, nice. Coach RT3, yeah, for sure. Yeah, All it's right. probably good side of things too. appreciate it. Yeah, I don't want to take your time. I know you're, you're, you got to get back to training and stuff like that. Yep. But, you know, I know listeners are going to love this podcast episode. And, you know, I thank, thank you, you so much for being on it. I keep getting yeses from everyone. And it just feels like a blessing. I'm grateful, as always. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Is there any last words? Uh, I don't think I mentioned my website is just empoweredstrength.com. So you can our vlog topics and you can get into our YouTube and our social media is just just through that area too. So easy easy access point and uh, love chatting with you. I appreciate the opportunity and anything I can do. You're doing a lot of great stuff and you know, your, your stuff comes up really high on search engines too. So people getting in touch with great coaches, that's ultimately, you know, all my greater purpose is served by just, uh, just being part of that process a little right bit. So it's a, right on. It's an honor 
to get in and more, you know, the Mace is just, just starting to ramp up. I'm sure everybody talks about that too. It's like, man, we are just in the, the base foundation. So it's, it's super exciting to, to be part of that too. Yeah. I think we needed a podcast with all the top coaches in the <laughs> United States and beyond, right? Oh, you're nailing it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> right on. All right. Thanks well, thank so. you so much and may the universe always flow with you. Awesome. Thank you.